Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about the phylum Porifera and we'll be following this lecture outline. Introduction to the phylum Porifera, characteristics of the phylum Porifera. As you know, the Porifera are commonly regarded as sponges. So we'll talk about these types of cells in sponges' body, types of canal system in sponges' body, and classification of the Porifera or sponges. Let's start with what do you understand by the term periphera? Periphera are commonly regarded as sponges, and this is because of the fact that they look like sponge. As you can see from the diagram being displayed, this is a periphera looking like a sponge. All right. So there are about eight thousand species of the periphera, and they are primitive multicellular animal possessing nether true tissues or organ. The term multicellular simply means they have many or numerous cells in their body. Let's talk about the characteristics of the proliferant. Most sponges are marine except from few water species. As you can see, the beautiful fung uh, sponges being displayed. They are multicellular, as I said earlier, and their body consists of a loose assemblage of cells, like cells that are loosely joined together. They possess what we call the ostia, through which water enter into their body, and oscula, through which water leave their body. You can see the ostia from the diagram and the oscula. Note that the word oscula is a plural word or term. The singular is osculum, and the singular for ostia is ostium. Note that the canal or the space within the body of the spongy is called the spongioco, rightly pronounced as spongiosil. Also note that they have the body canal system, which we will discuss later. They lack true tissues or organ, and digestion in this organism takes place intracellularly, that is within the cell. Their body is usually cylindrical, as you can see from the diagram. They carry out holozoic mode of nutrition and they depict the cellular grade of organization. You know that we have the cellular grade of organization, the tissue level, organ, and the system level of organization. Excretion as well as gaseous exchange take place through the process of diffusion. As you can see from the diagram, as water flows through this canal, waste products are actually passed out and they flow out through the, uh, with the water. Why essential material such as oxygen is being taken in and carbon dioxide is being given out, which is actually gaseous exchange or external respiration. Reproduction in this organism is usually carried out through the process of budding and fragmentation. Why sexual reproduction involves fusion or joining together of gametes? Note that the periphera has a symmetrical body plan, as you can see from the diagram. They cannot be caught into two equal halves through any plane. So this is termed a symmetrical body plan. Let's talk about the types of cells in the body of sponges. The types include, as you can see from the diagram, the coanocytes, the amoebocytes, which can actually differentiate or change into other types of cells. We also have the sclerocytes, pinacocytes, sporocytes, and others. Let's discuss them one after the other. Let's start with the coanocytes. Coanocytes are flagellated cells that line the chambers of the spongioco. Take a look at the sponges being displayed on the screen. The coanocytes actually line the inner chamber, and one of the end of the coanocytes is actually exposed to the inside canal, while the other is embedded in the mesohyl, as you can see from the diagram being displayed. What are the functions of the coanocyte? As you can see from the diagram, the cola of the coanocyte is the primary area where nutrients are actually absorbed into the body of the spongy. And the beating of the flagella of the coanocyte creates the water currents that eventually flow through the body of the spongy, where gaseous exchange and discharge of waste actually take place. The other type of cell we're going to talk about is the acrocyte which are actually amoeboid cells that move around the mesohyl. They are titipotent, which means that they can transform or change into other types of cells and can carry out in numbers of functions or various 
kinds of functions. The function of the acrocytes include the fact that they carry out digestion, intracellular digestion, that is digestion within the cell. They actually do this by engulfing food particles through a process called phagocytosis. They can also change or differentiate into other types of cells such as the sclerocytes which produces the spicus or the spongocyte which produces the spongy fiber of the skeleton as well as the cholenocytes that actually produce or secrete the fibrillar collagen. It should be noted that they can also differentiate into the lophocytes that secretes the collagen. The next type of cell is the pinacocytes, which are actually regarded as the skin cells of the sponges. They actually line the exterior of the spongy body, as you can see from the diagram. They are thin, leathery, and tightly packed together. They actually play a role in movement and also in signaling, as well as adhesion, that is attachment of the sponge's body to surface. Other types of cells in the body of the sponges include the myocytes and porocytes that actually surround canal openings and pores. They actually control the amount of water that enters the spongical through the pores. Sclerocytes, another type of cell, secrete spicules, while the spongocytes secrete the spongy fibers. Let's talk about the canal system in the body of sponges. We have three canal systems in the bodies of sponges and they include the asconoid canal system, the sponges are called asconoid sponges, the synchronoid canal system and the leuconoid canal system. The asconoid sponges possess the simplest organization and they are usually minute and tube shaped as you can see in the diagram. They are found in the class Carcaria and example include the leucosonian species and the clatrina species. The synchronous sponges possess a tubular body and a single osculum, as you can see from the diagram, like the axconoid sponges. However, they possess a folded outward body wall, which produces the coronocyte lined canal. This folding of the wall of the synchronoid and leuconoid sponges actually increases their surface area. Research on the importance of this surface area and send your answer to biologyaccess at gmail.com The last type of canal system in the body of spongy is the leuconoid canal system which is the most advanced and complex kind of canal system as you can see in the diagram. This canal system increases the surface area of the body of these sponges. This enables them to absorb more nutrients and actually allow this sponges to increase in size. So the leuconoid sponges are actually bigger than the asconoid sponges. Take a look at the numerous chambers present in the body of the leuconoid sponges. The last thing we are going to talk about in this video is the classification of sponges. The phylum porifera or sponges is divided into the following classes. Class Carcaria, Class Hesachinellida, Class Demospongia and Class Sclerospongia. The class Calcarea are regarded as calcareous sponges because their spicules are made up of calcium carbonate. They are actually minute in structure and they can be leuconoid, asconoid or even synchronoid in their body structure, I mean their water canal system. The hexactinellida are commonly regarded as the glass sponges and they usually possess radial symmetry. Note that their spicules are silicious. 90% of the living spongy species are found in the class Demospongies. They also possess silicious spicules. Species in the fourth class Sclerosponges are often associated with coral reef in the various regions of the world. They often possess numerous oscula. This is the end of the summary of the phylum Porifera. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thanks for watching.